Did Israel or Hamas blow up a Palestinian hospital today? We'll go over it. Representative Jim Jordan fails to get the votes necessary to become Speaker of the House in this round. Putin flies to China to meet with Xi Jinping to discuss Sino-Russian relations, and Joe Biden heads to the Middle East as one country tells him, don't bother to visit us. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. Also, check out today's video interview with Alex Marlowe from earlier today. He's the author of um, Breaking Biden, and he goes through all of the corruption from the Biden crime family over the last 50 years. It's a fantastic interview, and I'll link it at the end of this video. In the first round of voting on the House floor, Representative Jim Jordan, the Republican nominee for Speaker, fell short of the necessary votes to secure the gavel. 20 Republicans withheld support for Jordan, leaving him far from the majority of votes required to become Speaker. The final tally was 220 votes for Jordan, 212 votes for House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, seven for Steve Scalise, and six for former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Now, many of the 20 were from the state of New York, and Representative AOC actually predicted many representatives from New York wouldn't vote for Jim Jordan in the first round because he's super pro-life and is an active advocate for former President Donald Trump. AOC said they won't vote for him because he's super pro-life and likes Donald Trump, and that won't get them reelected in New York. And so in order to save their own seat, they will betray Jim Jordan. And that's exactly what happened today. Now, President Joe Biden is planning to ask Congress for an additional $100 billion in taxpayer money to provide support for Israel, Ukraine, and now Taiwan. This move is in response to recent events, including the attack from Hamas on Israel and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There's also significant worry that China will gain courage and make an attack on Taiwan. However, the U.S. has to play it safe because she cannot afford a three-prong war at this time. Now, the package is designed to cut through the usual political disagreements in Congress and bring both Democrats and Republicans together. It covers various forms of uh, assistance, such as military, humanitarian, intelligence, and diplomatic support. Additionally, the Senate will be looking into a resolution to condemn Hamas. Now, Chuck Schumer, the uh, head of the Democrat Party, is actively working to get this approved for Israel. He's aiming to secure the funding this coming week. My guess is, though, Democrats will want to sign off immediately as a group package and possibly include aid to Palestine, where on the Republican side, they're going to say, no money for Palestine, this must be done in separate bills, and no way are we passing an omnibus package. You have to separate things out so we know where the money is going. Now, Trump's legal team has filed an appeal to a separate court to have his gag order removed, citing it is election interference to silence a candidate running for U.S. president. Now, as I record this, the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, Lebanon, is surrounded by over 100,000 angry protesters. There's violence, fire, and tear gas being used on the crowd. People are chanting, death to America, and calling for Iran and Hezbollah to attack the United States. I pray all the people in the U.S. Embassy will be kept safe. The last thing we need is another embassy attack like we had under Hillary Clinton. So uh, send good energy their way, and let's hope that this situation resolves. Now, in a devastating incident, a massive explosion rocked a crowded hospital in Gaza City, resulting in tragic loss. The hospital was crowded with wounded individuals and other Palestinians seeking refuge, and the consequences have been heart-wrenching. Now, according to Hamas, uh, at least 500 people have lost their lives to this event. Video footage confirms that the hospital was uh, exploded and uh, on fire. And unfortunately, there's a lot of children in there and, and just innocent victims. 
Now, the cause of this catastrophe is a major contention. Hamas attributes the Israeli army to an airstrike on the hospital, saying that they struck them with a missile and caused all this damage. Uh, as a result of that, Israel is saying, no, 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 no. You were doing what Hamas does, firing rockets from apartments, schools, and hospitals so that we would retaliate, but your rocket or missile exploded and misfired and blew everyone up. Now, as a result of the confusion, uh, it, it's a horrific event, but ambulances were brought in, private vehicles, and they were moved to another hospital. But again, over 500 people have lost their lives. I'll, I'll report once we know the truth on who's really behind this. But as of right now, the IDF for Israel is blaming Hamas and Hamas is blaming the IDF of Israel. So uh, they're, they're basically just saying it was the other person. Now, this event followed a series of Israeli attacks in Gaza. Uh, so far, the death count is close to 2,800 people with almost 10,000 wounded. Um, it's just an absolute tragedy what's going on there. Innocent people uh, now part of a revenge attack because of innocent people killed in Israel. Uh, the key word being lots of innocent people. Um, Hamas does not seem to care, though, as uh, it does look like they've blown up some of their own people that were trying to escape to the south. Now, in the midst of these catastrophic events, Palestinian President Mohammed Abbas made the difficult decision to cancel his private meeting with President Joe Biden, uh, Jordan's King Abdullah II, and Egypt's president uh, in the country of Jordan. The meeting was intended to address the conflict and de-escalate before this gets out of control. Um, there have been major protests about the hospital explosion in the West Bank uh, and also with Palestinian security forces. That uh, meeting between President Biden and the president of Jordan and Egypt has been canceled because of the hospital explosion. Now, neither Israel, Jordan, or Egypt will allow Palestinian refugees to come into their country. They're saying, we don't know who these people are. We can't background check them. We can't vouch for them. And we cannot control their extreme ideologies. So, uh, even these Arabic nations are refusing to take in Palestinians. Um, so it, it's it's like watching trapped rats. It's very, very sad. And these are humans, right? This, these are not animals. With a substantial number of troops amassed along the border, there were expectations of a ground invasion from Israel onto Gaza City. However, the specifics of such plan remain uncertain and unknown. Uh, the specifics will likely remain secret until they either move forward or decide to cancel. Uh, some have discussed the possibility of there being an alternative strategy. From my military contacts, I'm being told that close to two dozen countries are frantically using back channels to communicate and negotiate and try to, to slow down this invasion from Israel. Everyone believes that Israel is entitled to this invasion, but hates the fact that innocent life will be lost because of it. And so for those reasons, you have, like I said, close to two dozen countries scrambling to shut this war down. Now, as the situation continued to worsen throughout the day, airstrikes led to numerous casualties in the southern part of Gaza, uh, and Israeli tanks shelled a school in the area, which did result in the loss of life. However, Israel says there were, no, there were no children in the school and that it became a target because Hamas was using it as infrastructure to fire on Israel and to hide basically the Hamas bad guys. Now, in the meantime, a humanitarian crisis in Gaza was intensified as people are trying to get to the southern end and, and escape into Egypt. Um, but the challenges continue to be great every single day. Now, President Biden's visit to the region was aimed at de-escalating this war. Tensions uh, had flared along Israel's northern border with Lebanon, where Hezbollah, backed by Iran, operates. In response, Israel evacuated nearby towns and clashes occurred on the northern border with Lebanon. Uh, furthermore, Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali uh, Khamenei, 
uh, issued a warning that if Israel continues their offense against Gaza, it will provoke a reaction from the Arabic world and that they will call for worldwide jihad in the area and that the Ayatollah leader will instruct the Arab world to attack Israel and the United States. Over in China, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping are meeting for the third Belt and Road Forum. This is Putin's first international trip since the Soviet, uh, since Russia uh, attacked uh, Ukraine. Sorry about that. Uh, now, the leaders will hold a formal uh, discussion to talk about the situation in Ukraine and how to further expand Russia's trade and China's trade. Uh, they are expected to criticize Israel and call for a ceasefire, uh, ceasefire and to end this war. China's foreign minister has condemned Israel's actions, saying that they have gone too far. Putin has uh, expressed his condolences for those who died in Israel, and there are many Russian Jews in Israel. However, he seems to be siding with Xi Jinping in saying Israel needs to be very cautious about uh, going in and attacking these innocent people. Now, that's, you know, the kettle... Uh, calling the pot black because there are innocent people dying in Ukraine as the Russia-Ukraine war continues to drag out. So just so much going on in the world today. I appreciate you stopping by and allowing me to update you. Before you go, I just want to remind you that you are amazing. Never, never, never forget that. You're a 10. You were born a 10. You will remain a 10. So don't let any of this drama going on in the world deter you from believing in yourself. Now, before you go, please give this video a like. Hit that subscribe button. We just hit 1.4 million subscribers and you are the ones to thank. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Check out this interview from earlier today. This guy goes through the details of the Biden crime family. Also check out this important video. Thank you so much and I will see you on the next video.